Hello, this is Dr. Liu from uh, St. Cloud State University. Uh, here's my smart track. So, this is a PASCO 1.2 meter uh, dynamic track, and I mounted the stoppers on both ends to uh, prevent the, uh, the cart from running off the track. And I replaced the feet on these supports with, uh, with force gauges so that I can tell uh, where the, uh, the cart is by marrying the force gauge. Uh, the force gauges and solving a one-dimensional equilibrium problem. And these are the three vernier first, uh, force gauges. One, this is a three, and this one is a two. And um, the gauges are all connected here with numbers uh, one, two, three on this uh, box that I uh, designed. Um, I'm calling it uh, the open source physics laboratory uh, hardware. So let's power this up and see what happens. Hopefully I can do this up with my hand. Here's uh, the AC adapter. Okay, so once powered up, you'll see balance track and three readings. These are the readings from the, uh, the force gauges. Uh, it doesn't hurt to check to see if they actually, they do anything if you push on the track. Looks like they are responding. Okay, so, with the track balance, with nothing on top of it, uh, you just press enter. The next step is to tr uh, choose the track length. This one is 1.2 meter. So just use the uh, previous and next, choose 1.2 meters and enter again. Okay, now it's showing 60 centimeters with nothing on it. Uh, well, it has to show something, uh, even there's nothing on it. And uh, if you want to see a different number, just basically use it finger to press, say press down 30 here. If I press down hard enough, it says 30. Okay, so now let's put the uh, PASCO cart on the track, see if it works. Um, make sure the, uh, the wheels are actually in the grooves. Sometimes they're not, so just kind of, just jiggle this a little bit, make sure it sits nicely in the grooves. And let's just move the, uh, the cart somewhere, let's just say 30, around 30 centimeters. Okay, and let's see, the reading is 30 centimeters. And if you move the cart around, the, uh, the reading will change. I'm just pushing the cart toward the, uh, the right side. Keeps changing. And if it's too fast for you to read numbers, this is actually the pause button. Um, let's just say, let's move it a little bit. Press pause, it paused. And then you can move the cart to a different location. The number sticks, it's 50. And then you can uh, press one more time on pause. Now it's 31-ish. Let me read it. Okay, so that's the uh, the quick demonstration for uh, this open source uh, physics laboratory box as a standalone. But also you can see there's a wire here that connects the box to a, uh, a Vernier LabQuest data acquisition system. So let me plug it in. And before I power the LabQuest, I want to push the middle button, it says local, local or remote. So if I push remote or slash local here, it says emulating sound grandeur. So it will be outputting pulses, emulating sound grandeur, so the uh, lab quest can pick up the, uh, the result. But on the other hand, it's going to pick up a one meter plus the exact location because sound grandeur can now report zero meters. So let's turn on the lab quest. Just push this. Wait for it to, uh, to start up. And while we're waiting, let's take a look at the card. It's about 30, 31 centimeters. So it's going to show about 1.3, 1.31 meters on the, uh, uh, the vernier. About 1.31. It fluctuates a little bit. And uh, if you just push this card one more time to see how it changes. Uh, the reading doesn't update as, as quickly as the uh, uh, open source physics laboratory box, but uh, it still updates. If you want to uh, collect data, you can press this button, but the first time you press it, it's going to be pretty slow. So let's try it. It takes a few uh, moments for it to uh, actually start. I would rather just waste the first trial because it takes a long time to start. Now it's, uh, it's kind of in the, uh, in the right stage to start. So what I'll do is I'll just move the cart across the, uh, the track and, and press start immediately.
Okay, so apparently there's a little friction. The, the car stopped before it actually got to the, uh, uh, the left end. You can see there's a position curve versus time. There's also a velocity curve versus time. And the velocity keeps uh, reducing and the position is, uh, is very much a parabola because of the, uh, the friction is uh, seems to be a constant friction. So that, uh, that concludes the, uh, the short demonstration of this track. It is basically able to report position and is also able to report, uh, well, to emulate a sound grinder. So it reports sound grinder location uh, to all lab, uh, lab pro, uh, let's see, lab quest or other vernier um, lab interfaces so that you can actually integrate this into your, uh, your own lab without having to, uh, to, to change any procedure, just pretending this apparatus is a, uh, a sound grinder. And thank you for watching.